The Reverend Richard Mather 1596 to 22 April 1669 was a Puritan minister in colonial Boston, Massachusetts. He was father to Increase Mather and grandfather to Cotton Mather, both celebrated Boston divines. Topic: <inaudible> Biography. <inaudible> 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 Mather was born in Lowton in the parish of Winnock, Lancashire, England, of a family which was in reduced circumstances but entitled to bear a coat of arms. He studied at Winnock Grammar School, of which he was appointed a master in his fifteenth year, and left it in 1612 to become master of a newly established school at Toxteth Park, Liverpool. After a few months at Brasenose College, Oxford, he began in November 1618 to preach at Toxteth, and was ordained there, possibly only as deacon, early in 1619. Between August and November 1633, he was suspended for nonconformity in matters of ceremony, and in 1634 was again suspended by the visitors of Richard Neal, Archbishop of York, who, hearing that he had never worn a surplice during the fifteen years of his ministry, Ministry, refused to reinstate him and said that, "...it had been better for him that he had begotten seven bastards." He had a great reputation as a preacher in and about Liverpool, but, advised by letters of John Cotton and Thomas Hooker, he was persuaded to join the Company of Pilgrims in May 1635 and embarked at Bristol for New England. On 3 June 1635, Richard, wife Catherine, and children Samuel, Timothy, Nathaniel, and Joseph, all set sail for the New World aboard the ship James. As they approached New England, a hurricane struck and they were forced to ride it out just off the coast of modern-day Hampton, New Hampshire. According to the ship's log and the Journal of Increase Mather, the following was recorded. At this moment, their lives were given up for lost, but then, in an instant of time, God turned the wind about, which carried them from the rocks of death before their eyes. Her sails rent in sunder, and split in pieces, as if they had been rotten rags. They tried to stand down during the storm just outside the Isles of Shoals, but lost all three anchors, as no canvas or rope would hold, but on 17 August 1635, torn to pieces, and with not one death, all 100-plus passengers of the James managed to make it to Boston Harbor. He arrived at Boston on 17 August 1635, after weathering the great colonial hurricane of 1635. As a famous preacher, he was desired at Plymouth, Dorchester, and Roxbury. He went to Dorchester, where the church had been greatly depleted by migrations to Windsor, Connecticut, and where, after a delay of several months, in August 1636 there was constituted by the consent of magistrates and clergy a church of which he was teacher until his death in Dorchester on the 22nd of April 1669. He was buried in the Dorchester North Burying Ground. Works He was a leader of New England Congregationalism, whose policy he defended and described in the tract Church Government and Church Covenant discussed, in an answer of the elders of the several churches of New England to two and thirty questions written 1639, printed 1643, an answer for the ministers of the colony to thirty-two questions relating to church government that were propounded by the General Court in 1639. He drew up the Cambridge Platform of Discipline, an ecclesiastical constitution in 17 chapters, adopted with the omission of Mather's paragraph favoring the halfway covenant, of which he strongly approved by the General Synod in August 1646. His reply to Mr. Rutherford 1647 is a polemic against the Presbyterianism to which the English Congregationalists were then tending. With Thomas Weld, Thomas Mayhew, and John Eliot, he wrote the Bay Psalm Book, 
or, more accurately, the whole Book of Psalms faithfully translated into English meter 1640, probably the first book printed in the English colonies. He was the author of Treatise on Justification 1652. Topic. Family Mather married in 1624 Catherine Holt or Holt died 1655, and secondly in 1656 Sarah Hankredge died 1676, the widow of the Rev. John Cotton minister. Of six sons, all by his first wife, four were ministers, Samuel 1626 to 1671 the first fellow of Harvard College who was a graduate chaplain of Magdalen College Oxford in 1650 to 1653 and pastor 1656 to 1671 accepting suspension in 1660 to 1662 of Church of St Nicholas within Dublin Timothy Mather 1628 to 1684 also known as the Farmer Mather, as he was the only son who was not a minister. He was made selectman of Dorchester, Massachusetts during the years 1667 to 69 and 1675 and 1676. He died in 1684 after a fall in his barn. Timothy married Elizabeth Atherton and had a son also named Richard Mather after his grandfather December 22, 1653. Richard Mather then went on to marry Catherine Wise and gave birth to a son named Timothy Mather after his grandfather on March 20, 1681. Timothy Mather then went on to marry Sarah Noyes and had a son named Timothy Mather Jr. after his father on October 9, 1711. Timothy Mather Jr. then married Sarah Lay and had a son named Timothy Mather after his grandfather on April 13, 1737. Timothy Mather then married Elizabeth Matson and had a son named Timothy Mather after his father on January 4, 1765. Timothy Mather then married Sarah Clark and had a son named Gurdon Clark Mather on May 5, 1797. Gurdon Clark Mather then married Eunice Minor and had a son named Horatio Nelson Mather on July 19, 1827. Horatio Nelson Mather's first three wives passed away, his fourth wife was Helen Marie Hayward, Wednesday, October 14, 1883. Together Horatio and Helen Marie gave birth to Gurdon Clark Mather after his grandfather the 11th of Horatio's 13 children on March 13, 1887. In 1896, at the age of 69, Horatio Nelson Mather became the father of his 13th child, Charles Mather. Gurdon Clark Mather then married Clara Emily Wilson and became the parents of Joy Esther Mather, the third of five children, Amy, Ruth, Joy, David and Doris, on December 31, 1917. Joy Esther Mather married and divorced Audley Blaine Fox but had one child, Norman James Fox later adopted and name changed to Norman James Widdis, born June 12, 1938. Joy Esther Mather then went on to marry Donald G. Widdis and the couple had a son named Kirk A. Widdis born January 9, 1955. Norman James Widdis married Ruth Ann McKinney on November 8, 1959 and had two children, Daniel Barry Widdis born October 6, 1960, and Walter Even Widdis born September 22, 1962 Ruth Ann also had a daughter, Susan K. Duran, from a previous marriage, born August 8, 1956. Daniel Barry Widdis then married Sandra Louise Pallas on November 4, 1978. The couple had eight children, Daniel Barry Widdis II, Brant Cedric Widdis, Lydia Beth Widdis, Micah Elizabeth Widdis, Elise Luann Widdis, Jonathan David Widdis, Abram James Widdis and Nocholas Evan Widdis. 
Nathaniel (1630–1697), who graduated at Harvard in 1647, was vicar of Barnstable, Devon, in 1656–1662, pastor of the English Church in Rotterdam, his brother's successor in Dublin in 1671–1688, and then until his death pastor of a church in London. Eliezer (1637–1669), who graduated at Harvard in 1656 and after preaching in Northampton, Massachusetts, for three years, became in 1661 pastor of the church there, father-in-law to the Rev. John Williams, minister (1664–1729), Harvard class of 1683, of Deerfield, Massachusetts. Increase who graduated at Harvard class of 1656 (1639–1723) was a Puritan minister and a major figure in the early history of the Massachusetts Bay Colony and Province of Massachusetts Bay, now the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Son-in-law to the Rev. John Cotton, minister, father of the Rev. Cotton Mather (1663–1728), Harvard class of 1678, Horace E. Mather, in his *Lineage of Richard Mather*, Hartford, Connecticut, 1890, gives a list of 80 clergymen descended from Richard Mather, of whom 29 bore the name Mather and 51 other names, the most common being Stores and Schaufler. Topic. See also Toxteth Unitarian Chapel <laughs> Notes <laughs> <laughs>